the Belgrade Community Library. My name is Liz. I'm the Adult Services Librarian here. Thank you for attending this um, voter information session. The session is for information only and does not endorse or promote any vote for or against any of the upcoming ballot items. We have three ballot items we'll be discussing today. The first two are centered around recreation in Belgrade. Uh, the first ballot item is the creation of a parks and recreation district, which includes an aquatic center, trail systems, dog park, and more. The second is a bond vote for the, uh, an aquatics and recreation center, including the land it would be built on. HRBC Streamline will also be informing uh, the public about the urban transportation district on the ballot as well. <laughs> um, the format will be as follows. Our speakers will introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about their professional backgrounds. Um, then they'll give an oral presentation about their ballot item. Uh, following each group of speakers, we'll welcome questions from the audience. Um, and at the very end, we'll have one more big Q&A in case you thought of anything um, that you want to, to ask anybody. Uh, we'll start off with the City of Belgrade staff, and we'll hear from the Belgrade Aquatics group, and we'll end with Streamline. We'll allow the group um, approximately half an hour to speak upon their topic. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and it will be um, uploaded to our YouTube page uh, once I have time to get it uploaded tomorrow. Uh, the League of Women Voter represents, uh, Representatives are here um, and they're available to help people register to vote as well. So stick around if you need um, to register to vote. As far as ballots go, ballots will be mailed out Friday, April 14th by the county election item or election office. Ballots are due 8 p.m. on Tuesday, May 2nd, which is election day. Ballots may be returned to the county election office in Gallatin County Courthouse, which is 311 West Main Street uh, in Bozeman, or by mail. Postage is now 63 cents or a forever stamp. Thank you all for everyone being here um, and providing your perspectives to the public. And a special thanks to our forum sponsors, uh, the American Association of University Women, Bozeman Professional Women, the League of Winter Women Voters of Bozeman, Bozeman Public Library, and the Belgrade Community Library Foundation. So I will go ahead and turn the time over to the City of Belgrade staff to talk about the upcoming Parks and Recreation District. <laughs> So my name is Neil Cardwell. I am the city manager for Belgrade. Been here just about 18 months now. I'm happy to be here. It's a growing, fast, rapid community. And uh, so our our staff here tonight, I'll let them introduce themselves. We're here to answer any questions that the audience may have. But as Liz pointed out, uh, we are not advocating for or against at this time, and we, we cannot as the city. Uh, so we're here to answer any questions or provide any facts for the, uh, for the aquatic center that is being proposed on the ballot today. Uh, so happy to be here and a great crowd. And thank you guys for participating. Uh, my name is Jason Karp. I'm the planning director here at Belgrade. I've worked here for in Belgrade for 28 years now, but I've been a resident of the city for much, much longer than that. Um, so I go way back and uh, to a time when Belgrade was a much smaller place than it is now. Um, and from day one, the question of should Belgrade have a pool has been out there. Um, I think everybody knows that. It's, people have asked us for it um, and uh, um, you know, said, said it should be considered. There was the effort to perhaps put an uh, uh, aquatics facility in Lewis and Clark Park, and it looked like when the private funding went to come, come through for that, the Splash Park was put in instead, which of course was a massive success. Um, but, you know, the full uh, pool facility didn't come about at that time. But it's always been out there, so I think the city council has finally, you know, finally said, you know, if we've gotten big enough, the high school is a swim team, we have the uh, Friends of Belgrade Pool, and the, you know, that group working really hard. Um, so maybe it's time to put it up to the voters and ask them to see because this is something that when we do our surveys and, and our plans, it comes up time and time again. So um, that's kind of what the deal is. It's a big ask, but um, with the city growing and, and more and more people coming into the city, um, that'll help spread the cost around. 
uh, Steve Fox. I'm the city's public works director. Uh, that means I manage uh, water, wastewater, streets, <coughs> and parks. Uh, I've been here about 15 years. And when I got here, that was a topic we talked about. This much money had just been built. We made a few additions to that. But there was a Friends of the Belt Grade Pool organization back then. Um, this a pool in the community has been tossed around for a long time. So uh, I too am glad to see that that kind of brought to lawyers to see what our community wants. So before I throw it over to the aquatics group, I'll just give kind of a 50,000 foot overview of the mechanics of this election and what we're actually doing here. So there are two items that are on the ballot. And uh, the first one is for the creation of the Belgrade Regional Parks, Trails, and Recreation District. The district entails the same uh, area as the Belgrade High School boundaries. And uh, the second, and with, with, if that was to pass, it would create that district and would also have an associated levy, uh, special assessment with it to fund the operation of that district, which primarily <coughs> would be uh, ballot initiative that is proposed to everyone here in May is to fund the operational costs of the aquatic center. The second piece is the bond for the aquatic center and its associated land, and that is estimated at the bond is set at $49 million ask, which that is a lot of money uh, that is post COVID uh, economy money that we live in today. And one thing that as a that is want to make sure is understood is that includes the 80 plus acres uh, of the site where the aquatic center would be constructed on and that is uh, you know at today's dollars is a six to eight million dollar piece of land just in and of itself and so it's not just the aquatic center at 49 million it's the land that goes along <coughs> with it along with the infrastructure that would be needed to run water and provide sewer, even though it's really close to some of our other facilities, there's infrastructure costs that go into that. And all of that is captured in that $49 million so, and so that we would, we'd actually be able to construct the facility as planned. Um, a couple of the big questions that are always asked is, well, if the district doesn't pass, would we end up, and the bond for the pool does, do we get the pool? No. You do not, because the district is the mechanism that the bond is associated with. And the way that we have structured this and in working with the community partners and the county, the, the district and the bond would be levied against all of those that live in the high school boundaries. That way, it brings the overall cost to the homeowner much lower than if it was to just be the city of Belgrade. And if we did it just the city of Belgrade, all of those students and parents that wished to use the facility but lived outside the city of Belgrade, which right now is about a 50-50 split, maybe 60-40, uh, and they would have to pay an increased fee because they would have to pay out of district fees associated to using that pool, <coughs> whereas if we spread it out to the entire high school district boundary, that everybody that is in that boundary would be getting the in-district rates to use the facility. Um, the city has uh, contracted with a couple of firms at this point. First was Councilman Hunsaker to do uh, what's called a pro forma analysis or a business model of the pool based upon the community feedback and some of the initial sessions that we received. Uh, those That feedback was put into a model that they use nationwide to determine the amount of cost that it would take to operate this pool. And that's where the number on the part, the regional district is, is coming from with an understanding of that this pool would be subsidized to a certain extent by the taxpayers and another portion by the revenue of people actually using it and the fees charged for things like uh, large swim meet venues and things like that. Uh, over time, you know, we would hope that the amount that's uh, done by fees would increase and the amount needed from uh, a subsidization from the tax base would get lower and would allow the, the facility to become self-funding. But the, the, the fact is that the majority of these aquatic centers are municipally <coughs> run across the United States. 
because of the fact that many of the programs the city and what the aquatics group are looking to do, <coughs> like uh, swim lessons for, for children, are usually treated much like this library in that we see them as a community civic benefit to make sure that our children are educated and learn to swim so that there, because there's a safety component with that, not only is it a good civic responsibility. And um, so that's, that's kind of a 50,000 foot overview of the mechanics of it. Um, but the only other piece is we do have an architectural firm that we have selected on board, A&E out of Bozeman will be the primary lead on this and they have been working with this preliminary uh, to the bond passing to help try to continue to refine what the costs and the facility type could be. And if the bond does pass, uh, they would be our architects that would move forward with engaging with additional community sessions to be able to finalize the overall scope of the facility and get it designed and built, and uh, which would take approximately 18 months of design and probably another 18 months of construction. So looking to like a 2025 scenario if the if the bond did pass. I had one quick question. Go for it. So another thing to think about, I think, with this project is the 80 acres where the facility is going to go. If you think about it, Belgrade doesn't have that big park, you know, that Stodden Park in Butte is one that pops to my mind, or um, uh, Washoe Park in Anaconda, uh, other cities. You know, Bozeman's got the 100 acre regional park, which is a county park that's in the city of Bozeman, so that does us a lot of good, right? So having a big central park that we can develop, and it, it'll take some vision, because that site is pretty much pancake flat, but um, you know, we could do a lot of cool things with that, I think, and so that's another ask is, you know, is that, is that something Belgrade wants and needs, is that, that big regional park, because we can't, when, when we do subdivisions, we require them to dedicate parkland with it, but it's going to get us an acre or two at a time, it's not going to get us that big chunk that, you know, that can be a real community focal point, point. and Lewis and Clark Park does a great job of that, but it's what, maybe four or five acres? So it's, it gets heavily used. <laughs> Just on that topic, I heard a rumor, I don't know if it's true, that there was another parcel other than the one on Penn Holdridge Road that was being looked at. Is that? Not by the city, no. Not by the city. No. There, there was talk uh, when this all came <coughs> off about 18 months ago, and I know that there had been previous work when it was kind of considered to be a private uh, development mm. to maybe put it at Minicucci Park. However, that site is just way too small and was not going to work, uh, not to mention the complexities of it being a four-way divided government entity piece of land. And uh, that's something we do very well as the government to really make that such a simple process. <laughs> so trying, trying to, it just wasn't going to work. We have a question in the back here. Where, where is the lot? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. So, is it in the city also? The property is in the process of being annexed right now. Um, it's off of uh, Penwell Bridge Road and Lagoon Road. It's, uh, it's state DNRC land. Our sewer plant is on mm -hmm. part of that property. Mm -hmm. And then just north of that, the city's got 30 acres that we're uh, going to use for a city shops facility. And then the rest of that up to Penwell could it could be well already people use it for sort of the de facto city dog park because they all walk their walk their dogs out in that area. So just next to the, the scales and stuff out. out. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. So uh, if the parks and trails part passes and the bond does not pass, then we do not get the pool, but we get the parks district. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. All right. And and then the assessment on that parks that is associated with the parks district would be used entirely <coughs> for parks, <coughs> trails, and recreation at that time. So that assessment would be less than if we had the pool in there because yeah. you're not it, funding it, the pool it, operation. It could be, but year one is set by the vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, that will not change because the vote sets year one. The board that would be created, which would be a mixture 
of City of Belgrade residents and those that live outside of City of Belgrade but within the high school boundaries, that board every year recommends the rate for that assessment and that assessment would have and that rate would have to be authorized by the city council of Belgrade and the county commission before it became effective. We recommended that as the city because we wanted to make it very clear to those that lived outside the city of Belgrade that our 100% intent is to have involvement of those people that do not live within the city and that they have a voice and they have representation and that the sideboards are that it takes both the council and the county commission to adopt that rate every year. And yes, that's what initial year was going to be. So the, and that's in the FAQ page on there, we could scroll down. The initial assessment is set for the city to, to or that district, to have $1.5 million in revenue from the district. That equates to about a $27 per 100,000 valuation on your home. That, oh, for, for simplistic nature, the average value of a home in the Belgrade High School District is less than $300,000. So you're looking at taxable value. There's a big difference between tax and, and, and so you're looking at sub 35-ish dollars per year for the for the uh, district portion of it. For the 49. The 49 million is is on top of that, which is about a 70. I don't want to. I've got so many numbers all the time. I don't want to speak. <laughs> yes. So a 70 dollar and 39 cent per 100,000. The all, the, what everybody wants to know is what's the all in? And the all in is approximately $20 a month or less for the average homeowner in the Belgrade High School District. Is what all in for both the bond and the uh, Parks, Trails and Recreation District is. And that's year one, which will be the most expensive year because the way that taxes work is that as the valley grows and there are more homes and businesses, the load is spread across the more homes and businesses. So it will never be more than it was year one because of the, and so it'll just trickle down over time to become less and less of a burden on the entire base. I, so on the website says assessed market value versus uh, tax value, is there like a difference between those terms? No, inherently that means the same thing. They're just what the county and the state use as that terminology. So you have two values on your tax bill. You have an assessed market value and a taxable value. And both of neither one of those represent what your true market value of your house is. It's usually right now less than half uh, of where it, where it sits at. That is the language that we're statutorily required to use when we advertise. Can I ask a question that's on, okay, it's not, it's not on the aquatic center of the parks, but I just want to make sure I understand this, is that when we voted for the new library, I got $140 in my head, and that starts with tax year 2023. Is that right? That the next year, uh, the next year's tax bills that go out will be the first year that the library bond is on the tax bill. Do I have the number right? Or can you tell us? It will be less than that uh, because of the fact that the tax base is significantly larger now than it was in 2019 when the bond went, went out. I won't have the exact number until we run next year's uh, actual assessment. But for facts purposes, when the city was annexed by Central, this is, this is key, when the city was annexed by Central Valley Fire District, we abandoned our municipal services levy. That levy is, was significantly more 
than the library bond levy. Mm -hmm. So even as of today, the taxpayers of the city of Belgrade are paying less in taxes when the library is charged to them than they were prior to because of dropping off the municipal services levy. Good to know. Thanks. Can you speak a little more about the Regional Parks, Trails, and Recreation District? Exactly what does that, is it, is it going to create another bureaucracy within the government? Is it a county, city? Um, we love to create bureaucracy. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> another, another, you know. Another agency, another office, or what is exactly is this district going to, to do? I, I'll be happy to answer that. I'm sorry, Jesse and the team <laughs> down there. We haven't even got to your fun stuff. That's yet. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, does it, does it, I'm just thinking about like the assessment that was just done about you know, creating this trail system from Bozeman to Belgrade. Is that, you know, is that going to be a part of that plan? Is it a county deal, city deal, both? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So, okay. yes. So the way the way that it's functionally done is it's a interlocal agreement between the county of Gallatin and the city of Belgrade. The city of Belgrade is the lead on this interlocal agreement because we are asking to leave our city limits to create this district. We require the county's permission to do so. And the county and the city will, at uh, preliminary, entered into that interlocal agreement to be able to put this on the ballot. Okay. That agreement basically says that the city of Belgrade will manage, own, and operate all parts of this district. Any buildings that are constructed, any trails that are done, all of that within the district are owned and operated by the city of Belgrade. The reason for that is insurance at its simplest reason, is that it becomes very complicated sure. for us to share ownership. And, and when it comes to operating the pool, there'll be City of Belgrade employees. And that is where that interlocal agreement sets that all up. But in that interlocal agreement, it also sets up those sideboards I talked about earlier of who has fiscal responsibility. Okay. In essence, the district will operate very similarly to the way that the city operates in that the, the board will charge the city of Belgrade staff to develop and put together the budget and plan based upon their feedback and recommendations of what they want to see. And then they as the board will look at that and go, I like the budget, I don't like the budget, we want to spend more on this, we don't want to spend it on this. <coughs> hey, what about this project? Staff will go back and make that work. And then ultimately, hopefully, when staff gets it just the way they want it, they'll approve it and we'll go through that process. The goal of this is for the, the district is even larger in long-term planning than just the aquatic center, no, much like you I mentioned. Really like about it, yes. Yeah. We want, you know, we have adopted as government bodies recently things like the Triangle Trails Plan <laughs> that lay out this trail system to interconnect all of us together. <laughs> right. That is something that is one of the key goals of this district is to over time be able to do. Uh, we want to have connectivity between all of the different places. This is a great community, great place to live, and we think that that's a great tool to be able to do that. Oh, it's very lacking in Belgrade. We don't have that system. We don't have a lot of places to go right. walking, you know, on trails and things. So. Belgrade is the only city of the first class, which is over 10,000 people, that does not have a parks district Interesting. or a parks department. Mm -hmm. And we've never had, we've never issued a levy specifically for parks. The other uh, eight to seven cities that are over 10,000 citizens do, Belgrade has not. Thank you. Jesse? Okay. <laughs> I think you're up. Hi. Um, I'm Jesse McLeod. I am the president of the Belgrade Aquatics um, Center group, and uh, we are a nonprofit group that is just in support of bringing an aquatics and recreation facility to our community. I um, am really passionate about this project because of all the bodies of water that we have here. We really need to have water education. Um, we really want a, a year-round facility. Um, there's a lot of things to do here that are amazing in the summertime. In the wintertime, we're pretty limited on things we can do. Uh, we have a lot of different organizations that have reached out 
that are excited about the potential use of a facility like this that will help with the programming costs, as Neil had mentioned. Um, one of those uh, ranging from scuba diving certification. Uh, uh, we've got groups with water hockey, water polo, uh, paddleboard uh, yoga. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got aerobics uh, classes that have reached out and uh, we, our intention is to have first and foremost a 50 meter competitive pool. Nothing has been designed. We're still in talks once the, the um, bond passes. <coughs> Um, then that begins talking with the community some more about what are fine-tuning those things. Um, one of the big things is the, the 50 meter pool, then we want to have a lap pool, a therapy pool, lazy river, and a family area are our main portions of the aquatic facility. So I just want to touch base on that. There's a lot more groups I can answer more questions, but I'm going to pass it off to my vice president. I'm April Johnson and I've um, been with this group for a while. Just again really passionate about bringing this here um i'm a mother and you know i would love for kids in this whole valley to be able to have something like this um and you know even bozeman doesn't really have anything comparable to what we're looking at so this would be really uh something beneficial to the whole valley um to use and again kind of like neil had said it is a safety issue that children don't know how to swim and we would love to offer swim lessons to the schools and different groups and things like that to just make sure that all kids have access to that. And I've been really passionate about that aspect of it. Um, and I know we also have a lot of swim teams, both the high school, but we also have club that are very passionate about, you know, competitive <coughs> swimming for kids along with teaching them. So, um, and as we've grown through this, as Jesse was saying, there's many groups that have reached out that um, would really benefit from this. And it's been amazing to kind of talk with a lot of those groups and learn how they would benefit also. So I think it would be such a great um, asset to our community for zero to 100. You know, I mean, anybody, any age would benefit from this, so. Do you want me to go through the slides? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay, so <laughs> So uh, this has kind of come up. So this is where the, the location is, um, kind of gives you that visual of, of where the intended uh, usage is. So as um, we kind of talked about, this is that market value. So this is the website to go to to find out your particular value of your home. It's really good to do that in any type of voting situation so that you know specifically the impact that this is going to have on you. Um, just kind of talking about the two different yeah. bonds. Sorry, I mean, no, go so for it. <laughs> um, Neil it did a great job of explaining this, but I just wanted to make sure that people understood that if one, if the aquatics passes, but the special district does not, you, nothing happens. You don't get anything. So it, that's important to remember when you're filling out your ballot of what you want. Make sure that's communicated correctly when you're voting. Is there a video yeah, that will throw this stuff on? There's a video, and we can get you the oh, one. There's some handouts. I do have some pamphlets yeah. over here. Yes. Okay. But all of these three. Um, come straight from the FAQs on the city website and then our website as well. So we can definitely get it to you. So is there a reason for doing them both at the same time and not trying to get the district pass first rather than putting them both up at the same time? Or was there, is it just yes. how it happened? Yes, uh, I come, strategy, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to shy away from anything on that. Uh, it simply was that in when, when the city looked at nationwide the success rate of this type of project, it's much easier to convey this as a one bite of the apple approach. Um, and we felt that that communicated the entire intent of what we were trying to do. And we did not want to make it look like well, thanks for this, but we really wanted more as well. So being clearly communicative of what we were trying to do, kind of a one bite of the apple approach. And if I may be bold, we knew that Bozeman was gonna be in talks of wanting to do something. And we wanted to show our voters that we were ahead of the curve cool. on this. And we were ready to solve this problem <coughs> for Bozeman. 
and uh, Belgrade as a, as, you know, we have one of our city council members here as an overall idea and philosophy, we are trying to take that approach of we are, we woke it up, we want to be at the big boy table, we want to be recognized, and we think that we want, and we're okay in communicating to the citizenry, look, we think that you deserve this. And, you know, ultimately, it's the citizen's voice that will decide that. Um, but we're, we're ready to be bell great instead of below grade. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're proud to say that. <laughs> Is there a certain amount of money that has to be raised before it can go to a bond issue to um, no. like to do with the library? No, we ultimately decided not to do that for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, uh, in, in looking at the history of the way that bonds work across the nation and in this valley, the passing of the Belgrade Library bond with that strategy was a one-off. That was a, an amazing feat and amazing groundwork was done on that. That's not normal. And it's also very, very difficult for a city to go about it that way because you can end up in a situation where you didn't bond enough capacity because you were hoping to have enough uh, donations made. A project like this, unlike the library, which we were able to successfully, and Gail's back there and she'll, she could nod or shake her head no, we were, able, we were able to successfully shrink it a little bit in order to maintain our budgets that were constrained by post-COVID construction and still deliver what the, we think the voters have asked for. With a project like this, it's simply not possible to make those kind of, you know, constrained, constraints due to budget. If you've designed a 50 meter pool and a venue seating and you program it to be that, and you find out, well, we didn't raise a couple million dollars here, we, it basically makes the whole project undoable at that point. And so we didn't want to risk that. And now, that's not to say that the city wouldn't welcome and receive <laughs> donations from the community to, to reduce the overall burden. Any capital donations that were received would just be rolled into reducing the principal on the bond at that point, which would be a direct mm -hmm. savings to the public yeah. if, if there was a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. uh, since the library came back, I'm not sure who would need to answer this question, but uh, you mentioned the library as a community thing that we, it's good for the community and the pool and the same thing, but we don't pay to use the library. And I'm wondering why there's a fee for the people paying the bond to use the pool. Is that just to keep the overall bond down? Or? Yes, uh, and because this that that's the typical model for a facility like this. If you were to make it 100% open to everybody that was in the district, you would have it. Frankly, it wouldn't pass, and it wouldn't be palatable to to the end users. We would be talking to the tune of having to have a $5 million assessment every year to, to run and operate this. Um, and, the, and the thing is, is that uh, many of these, the uses of a pool like this are from people outside the area or are from private parties or groups or associations that charge their members for, to, to be a part of this membership. And so it's appropriate for the city and the district to try to recoup some of that cost to keep the burden lower on the taxpayer. But that doesn't mean that it's meant to be set at a price point that is astronomical or usable. I would, I would suggest, you know, that hasn't been set yet because we haven't done any final designs. But if you looked at like what Bozeman charges for a day pass, you're, it's like $4 for a child to go use the pool for a day. And you know something very similar to that type of setup would be what we would anticipate, along with the fact that ultimately it'll be that board and our city council and staff type of decision of we want to have programs like making sure every second grader or third grader in the in the Belgrade schools gets to have swim lessons at no cost. So that's where that balance comes in. But does that answer your question? Um. Pretty much, yes. It's, it's just, it sounds like it's spreading it among the users, more of the cost among the users than just among the perhaps non-users. Well, I'd suggest there's a lot of maintenance on the pool.
school as opposed to they the are, private? Yes, they're, they're very, they're very cost expensive for that. And I think, you know, I was, I was trying to think of a better way of maybe to tie in the analogy of everybody pays the base tax to have water and sewer pipes connected to your house, but you do pay water and sewer rates for consumption right. of that. Right. Same type of philosophy of if you came to the library and yeah, it's, it's free to check out a book, but you're not cons consuming the book. But if you were to make a copy of something in the library, there's a charge for that. So it's a similar type philosophy. In this is probably addressed okay. to you. <laughs> have, have, have you had any discussion about, you know, in, in some of the cities I've been around, the YMCA runs the swimming program. Have you been in any kind of contact with them to maybe run the swimming programs in the pool? Or? So the YMCA um, has actually uh, said that they are in support and they would love to rent the pool space to run swim lessons as well, along with other uh, groups and private instructors. We've got a lot of interest from a lot of different groups um, basically saying, build this tomorrow and we're gonna book it. Um, so we aren't worried on programming at all because we do know that, that the need is there and, and ranging from what I was saying earlier of some of those other groups to competitive swimming. And we know that um, our, what, one thing Belgrade is lacking is business. We, we don't have that thing that draws people here. We talk about it a lot in um, various organizations of how do we capture people that are passing through Belgrade and not just to stop at Albertsons or get gas and head up to Big Sky, or how do we keep people that live here here. We want people to play here, live here. We want people in Belgrade instead of a majority of us have to travel to Bozeman or if we want to use a larger aquatic facilities or anything like that, we have to even leave the, the county. So we're coming at it with, okay, we know that we've got these different groups that are reaching out to us and they're ready. They're ready to use this facility, whether it's the therapy pools, whether it's the lap swimming, whether it's the competitive pool. We've got these groups. So what's going to stand our facility out versus somebody else that might come down? Because as Neil said, we know now that other groups are chomping at the bit to, to see if this would work for them too. It might be a different layout, might be a different situation. We want those people to come to Belgrade. We want that to benefit our community. We want that to benefit our business owners. We want that to benefit our uh, taxpayers. We want these large competitive uh, swim meets because that brings dollars into our community. And it also brings dollars into our facility. Uh, that, those are big money makers, uh, but also it gets our community involved. That is one thing that we've also talked at, about in various groups is there's a thing that Belgrade is kind of going through with this growth spurt, right? We went from a class C to double A. We're trying to get our bearings. We're trying to figure this out. We've got the swim teams. We've got all the different sports. We, we're kind of like baby deer a little bit, <laughs> um, trying to figure out our footing. And we want to make sure that not only when this is designed and programmed, that it's not going to be something that we see continually in this valley of, oh, we built it. We're bursting in capacity. Hey, taxpayers, can we have more money? Yes. We want to build this to where it benefits as many groups as possible. We want it to benefit as many ages as possible, abilities as possible, and needs as possible. And so our group is really going to advocate for that. And we really want it to be accessible and affordable because that's what Belgrade needs. We also need something that we get to say, this is what we want. We don't need another group coming in. We don't want a private company coming in and saying, no, nope, this is what it's going to be. And it's going to be $25 per person and $500 for a family to go for a weekend. That's insane. It doesn't work for the families here. It doesn't work for the community members here. We want something that gets people out healthy and can be a hub in our community. We want something that brings people together. We know that these kind of facilities, if they're done correctly, can be that. We need something that can benefit all of these different groups, but excite people to come to Belgrade. In my opinion, and I know I'm biased because I love this community, we have a better view of the mountains. <laughs> we do. You can be the Bozeman, and that's fine. We have 
better view, <laughs> Belgrade is beautiful. And we want to capitalize on that. And we think with building a facility like this and everything aligning the way that it did and with all of the support, people are seeing the benefits that this could have, not only on our community, but on people coming to our community. We want to capture that. We want, we're so close to the airport. We're so close to the interstate. We can capture that. Yes, you can go to Butte or you can go to Billings and go to the hotel. Why not Belgrade? And that's what we're trying to make sure that we're advocating to taxpayers because we're also taxpayers. We're parents. We're involved in the schools. We see the needs, but we just have um, a passionate side with let's let's have that pool. Let's get that here too. Now, there's other things that people have asked about with this facility. What are the other things with the recreation? And again, I just can't stress enough, nothing has been designed. It's all, these are our, our want list. We know if we have a 50 meter competitive pool, that's gonna bring money into our community. Mm -hmm. We know that. We've seen the numbers, there's research across the nation. We know that. We know we need a heated lap pool where all ages can go for swim lessons, aquatics, therapy. Um, we want a therapy pool because we don't have something like that in this community, um, in this valley, in this region. We just don't have that. And there's been so much research done on low impact physical therapy done in these type of pools that are so beneficial to all ages and abilities. We want something that's also dedicated to families. We are a growing family community. We need something for young families to be able to do. We have the library and that's what we have. <laughs> and the library is amazing. We need something that can let these little ones get some energy out. We need a place where families can gather and make memories as long as there are as well as at the library, but we just don't have a lot of those things. We lost the the um, video game. I don't even. I can't remember what the name of it. Yeah, laser, laser tag and video game. We don't have go karts. We don't have facilities like this for families to go to, and families will come to to something like this. Um, we also want to make sure when we're keeping this in mind. Okay, well, what else? could this facility um, entail? And one thing that's been brought up time and time again is a multi-purpose room. Um, speaking with Central Valley Fire Department and other organizations in our community, we don't have a space where organizations and groups in our own community can go to have fundraisers or dinners or large trainings. We, we don't have that. We're gonna have some of that, thankfully with the new library, space, but we're going to, that's going to be booked up immediately. It is. The high school is all booked out. We're having to turn people away from being able to use the facilities there. And so there's a lot of different conversations that can come forward after the vote of what does that design look like? But one thing that Steve said that I absolutely love mm -hmm. at one of our meetings was right now we are in an amazing position where we get to decide the vision for Belgrade. And that's pretty amazing. We get to say right now, this is what we want in our community and what it's gonna look like 20, 40 years from now, we get to say that. Do we want it to be all these scattered communities that are, we're trying to tie into one another and make Belgrade whole? Do we wanna have hubs? Do we want, what do we as a group, as a community, want from our community? What do we see the needs for our communities for future generations? I guess my plan, my thought is looking at the businesses, the hotels, the rental cars, all of the daycares or managers, what all you may need bringing in all of these people. We're going to have enough to support that now. The we restaurants. Well, well hotel-wise, we've got uh, two under construction right now and a couple more coming in, so I think we're okay, going to be okay. We just met with another developer yesterday on another hotel, so it seems like we're going to be getting a lot of those, but that's a good point. Yeah. We're new to the, the area, so tell me there is a nice bed tax that the city benefits from? Not really. The bed tax all goes to tourism promotion um, for the most part. And this is the tourism. 
Yeah, if, if there's a way we can figure out to tap into that. <laughs> okay, just put that out there. But most of the bed tax you pay is, uh, is to bring more people to this area, and yeah. it, it, uh, it's worked very well. We can all tell them this okay. how busy it is. Currently, the, the bed tax goes to the Chamber of Commerce. They, yeah, they, okay. they, are, they get it for that. But, uh, yeah. that that's what that looks at currently. What you said about the views was a really great comment. Um, because that area out there was by the sewer lagoon. Man. Quit saying that. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a water reclamation facility. I, I make this joke half jokingly all the time, but if you've ever been on that berm of that water reclamation facility, it is stunning. Oh, yeah. The view of the bridges from there and the birds flying over the pond. You just don't imagine what's in that water. <laughs> but it, it's gorgeous out there. And so, a, a regional park, you know, we get some trees planted, we get some stuff done out there, yeah. it'll, it'll be quite gorgeous. So that is a, you know, for the voters to consider. It is a little removed, but it, today, it's, you know, wow. it's, yeah. shoot, even watching That's the airplanes from out there, it's kind of fun, it's kind of cool. So. I'd like to add to that, you know, one, one of the big reasons that we thought that that was the key piece of property was because when we look at a master planning of this whole community, in 20, 30 years, that's the center of the earth mm -hmm. as things start to grow, start to grow around it. And we, we know where this stuff is going now. And so we are, like what Jason said earlier and Steve has mentioned in other times, we really don't have another opportunity in any foreseeable future to acquire a piece of property that large. With, not, that's in uh, use. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. it's kind of our, I don't want to say last shot, but it feels that way in a lot of ways. And uh, one, one other piece is, I know Jason loves to keep pointing out the poo plant to the south. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't stink. Well, and, and we have uh, in additional phases that are being done now with, with that plant and into the future. It will become encapsulated in the future, and so smells will become a thing of the past <laughs> out of that area. The, the, giant, the giant open poo pile that it was won't be no more. <laughs> there is no active irrigation ditch through that property anymore. There, there, there is no lateral. Yeah, 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 but that, that's on the far, the far edge before it gets to that. Yeah, so where the water center is kind of looking at being put is, is in front of that. Not yeah, that ditch comes through and kind of cuts that yeah. last piece of corner off. Yeah. Over ground. Yeah. Likely we would have maybe pedestrian bridges across that or something like that. For parks and trails. Possibly down on that gravel pit, we would install trails through there for some other things. And I just want to be clear because this is, I guess, the question I have is but the land, we, you won't buy the land unless the bond passes. Correct. Correct. Not, just yeah, the, that the, district is the district that revenue would, the would not be enough to buy the land. So, are they holding that land for the city, or I mean, what? What's your? Why is your confidence so high that it's really? Going to be because DNRC really, really wants to see a park and a aquatic center there instead of it being possibly developed. Um, uh, honestly, no, they're not holding the land. It's the same situation the school district was in, uh, that they can't 100% promise it until we say that we can buy it. Um, and so we have, we have turned in our intent to do so. They know that if, we, if it doesn't pass, that it won't go through, uh, essentially is what will they, we'll they, happen. They've had it out for RF for proposals <coughs> and for years, but this, the sticking point with them is they don't want to, they won't sell it. And so if a developer develops it, they have to have a long-term lease. So they can't sell lots if they develop it. It's leased land. So that turns off some developers. And so I think they look for other opportunities. But eventually it's going to be lucrative enough. Like the storage unit place that is on the one corner, he has a lease on that. He doesn't own that. So it'll, it'll probably turn into more stuff like that if, if he 
you know, it doesn't become a city park. So is yours a lease on this land, or are you buying this land? It's a, it's a permanent easement when a city buys it. It's as close to owning it as you can get. The state does not allow to sell the land, but if the city buys it, it's permanently easemented to the city. It's like the soccer fields out on top of Spinner Road is back. No, that is a slightly different scenario out there. That's part of that four-way weird uh, thing that we've got between the airport, us, the schools, and DNRC. The, the closest thing to it is what the schools are talking about over off of Frank, of the way that that works. We have other permanent easements of that land that are for our public works facility and the lagoon itself. Uh, but that relationship of a permanent easement is really <coughs> only available to schools and cities with DNRC property. The front edge along Penwell, that's those those lots they have held back for commercial uses. So we're just trying to get uh, a big enough access through there so we could have a, an approach into that property from Penwell as well as I'm feeling bad for <laughs> I know. You're all you're all talking about how long this has been going up. When I met this guy back in the seventies, his mom was pushing for a pool and golf. <laughs> 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 she had a community center going downtown in the building where the coffee shop and stuff are now. That was a community center for parties and stuff like that. So I was just telling him he had Forward looking mom. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think for years, everybody, I think we were kind of in the hopes that maybe some sort of uh, rich person was donating <laughs> huge we money to get a building in. You know, kind of what happens, seems to happen at MSU all the time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you get 50 million from some grad and maybe you know, they put the name on the building, and, you know. This doesn't happen in this city. <laughs> I think we finally were resigned to the fact that the sugar daddy is not going to come. <laughs> so we thought, let's throw it out there and see what, what happens. I think Jesse hit it on the head. I, like, I don't want to go to Bozeman. I want to be here. Mm -hmm. I want to eat here. I want to play here. here. I don't want to have to go to Bozeman. And yeah. Going downtown is horrid. It's, it's awful. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. our swim team, so we have a high school swim team, and this year, um, with the Bozeman Swim Center, uh, roof collapsing yeah, and the right. issues there. Um, our kids were bottom of the barrel and they got uh, very few slots and it was at 5 a.m. And so those kids had to get up and they had to drive in at five o'clock in the morning to be there for swim practice. And again, they weren't given the, the best time slots. They weren't given very many slots. And that is how our community is ultimately viewed. Right. It's not it's not anything against Bozeman, but we don't need Bozeman. No. I, we, we have a beautiful community full of beautiful people and uh, businesses that want to come here. We just know that it's one of those things where we're getting the traction and things are going to happen. And it's hard because we have had people say, well, we don't, we don't know. You keep on saying that there's going to be more growth. There's going to be more growth. There's going to be more growth. There is. There is going to be more growth and we can either get ahead of it and like they were saying as far as right now we can get that land or it could be storage units. Yeah. It could be something that doesn't add to our community. It doesn't add to what we need. Yeah. So it's one of those things. Yeah. One of the concerns I have with it is that as you said there's like a lot of groups clamoring to get time there and this that and the other and our swim team should you know be, is that it's going to be constantly booked, mm -hmm. and that those of us that are paying for it, taxpayers, I don't have children or anything, but I love a good pool, mm -hmm. um, that there won't be a time that I can even really go and use it because it's booked by this group or this group, and they're paying big money to use it, so I'll be the odd man out on that. So, um, Councilman Hunsaker is an amazing organization that is the um, uh, aquatics, uh, like, um, consultants. Um, they build these nationally and internationally. And with the pro forma, one of the things that they talk about is that programming and potential use of that. And it's really important that there's gonna be blockouts for individuals to use. We also have a lot of people that have reached out that are marathon, triathlon, uh, people that really need a facility like this for training. 
they also have the same concerns. They're like, hey, we want to be able to use a facility like this. No offense to the kids and everybody else that wants to use it, but where does that sit with me when I don't have kids and I need a facility like this? So it's really important that we continue these types of conversations after the vote because that's when things kind of get fine-tuned and figured out. The big thing for our group is we want to continue these kind of conversations. We want to help champion the voices of as, as many groups as possible, mm -hmm. but we can only do that if people come and share those mm -hmm. concerns because it is a valid point and it is a valid concern because your money spends just as much as a mom's money of like, hey, I want to take my kids, sure. but I also don't want to take my kids all the time. <laughs> no offense to my kids, they're great, but maybe I just want to go. Yeah, and so I think we want to make sure that, uh, again, it's that accessibility and affordability um, and making sure that it's built in a thoughtful way, keeping all of those things in mind. So again, yes, we know that we've got different groups that are going to be using it, but if we build this bursting at capacity, which Belgrade tends to do, mm -hmm. um, that doesn't do any of us any good. Because then again, we'll be coming back and doing another one of these and yeah, saying, hey, since, we need more. Since there's actually not a design yet, but we have this dollar amount, how mm -hmm. do we know it's going to actually all work out? I mean, so, they, are, can you come back and ask yeah. for more money later? Or? I, I can touch on that a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we've done some research. Sure. Uh, so. First off, one thing that I want to make clear is that this will, this will be a municipal pool. Mm -hmm. And so our priority is always to the taxpayer on the time that the, the pool is available. And, that, and I know that the aquatics group knows that stuff. So making sure that the public has access to it is the number one priority when it's a municipal run pool, which was one of the primary reasons why we did not want to engage with a private entity supporting it or running it. So the answer to your second question is, we have done preliminary research by having some community groups several months past, and my, as we mentioned, uh, the consultant councilman Huntsaker. So we knew kind of roughly what to size this at. And so we're looking at a 70 to 75,000 square foot facility. And based upon that information and plugging in all, all the bits, we know how much that facility would cost to construct and operate within reason based upon what little things we could plug into it. We also know and have communicated with not only Councilman Hunsaker, but with A&E, our architect that is on board, that there would be a desire to expand in the future at some point because, yeah, we're right, we're wanting to build this so it's not bursting at the seams, but we also know that when we did all of our community sessions, there was quite a lot of appetite of the community. Well, we want this, we want this, we want this, we want this. We did it all at once. I'd be here asking for $250 million and you'd laugh me out of the room. So, but the future could be, you know, maybe that there is an additional multi-purpose rooms or additional recreation components that the community wants to bring in. And maybe the community has grown enough that it isn't a bond type situation that the revenue that the that the district is bringing in would be able to support that type of construction, or maybe it would be a bond ask in the future. But we're definitely looking at this from all the different angles. We've got the numbers, we've got the data, we know based upon what the ratios would be of, of um, cost to taxpayer versus cost to the attendee of the pool, what those numbers should be based at for that size of facility. And we think we've got that you know, and we're using nationwide reputable firms that do this all the time that don't want to be wrong because <laughs> they want to continue to sell their services for people down the line. Um, so we, we've done a lot for that, and, hope, and I, hopefully that answers your Perfect. question. Thank you. Part of what's built into the into the modern aquatic center designs is it's not one pool that if a, if a user group's in there, it's shut down for a little bit. Yes. Okay. You have segments, there may be, you know, lazy rivers are popular when you're too deep. Sports team may be practicing in one end, and another type of use or multiple types of use are still available for other programs. One, one last fact that I'll add, because I know you're going to cut me off, yeah. is uh, this is just a fact that if the bond does pass, the U.S. swim trials are coming up, and pools are constructed for those 
U.S. swim trials. If the bond does pass, we will be able to engage with the vendor that builds those pools. They'll be able to build the pool to the specifications of the Belgrade Aquatic Center. They will use it in the U.S. swim trials, package it up, deliver it to us at a significantly reduced cost than buying it totally independent for us. Ooh, Just that means we would have the world's fastest pool in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll take one more question and then we'll okay. more. We just moved here in October from southern Arizona where it's Welcome. A, little, a little warmer. <laughs> <laughs> we have noticed that it's a lot colder here <laughs> since we've been here. <laughs> this will be a 12-month operation, not a yes. summer yes. 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 Great question. Yes. 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 Outdoor pools don't make a lot of sense here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so I want to turn our time over to Sunshine Ross, who will talk to us about the Urban Transportation District. So I didn't know all of the work that went into it, but um, so anyway, I'll just get started. Uh, so basically, I um, wanted to make sure that everybody is, we're trying to talk to as many people as we can to explain what an urban transportation district is, because it's something that's not been done in Montana for decades. And so it's not easily, easy to understand. And it, it does differ from um, a district within a city. It is completely separate, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit too. And another piece is to make sure that everybody gets this, the, their votes in because it's a mail-in only vote or drop off at uh, ballot boxes. Um, and that has a, a voter turnout of less than 50%. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're, uh, people are watching for it in their mail and that um, people are aware of their, what they're voting on. Um, and then the language on the ballot because of um, statutory regulations is not exactly clear that it's for streamlined. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to make sure that, it, that it's understood that what's on the ballot, the Gallup Mount Urban Transportation District, is for streamlined and Gallup services. Um, and then just leave you with kind of three quick points to remember. Um, and then I do have a schedule and frequently asked questions um, for handouts as well. Um, so we knew that um, we sh well, let me back up a little bit. The, when Streamline was first being designed, um, there was a need identified for transportation services. That continues to be the case in every community that HRDC serves. So every year, they, every three years, they go out and do a community needs assessment, and transportation always comes to at least the top five. Uh, it looks a little bit different in each community, but it's always one of the needs. Um, and so, in the beginning, before Streamline was, was started, there was a needs assessment done um, and a feasibility study, and the stakeholder, public transportation stakeholder group, and they hired a transportation planner to look at how we would operate public transportation in our communities, um, and whether it should be a city-run <coughs> system, a county-run system, or an urban transportation district. And they ultimately recommended that model of not, if you couldn't form the district, um, because that, um, as we have seen and it lived in the last couple of years, it takes some time to do. Um, and so initially, or ultimately what was decided is that HRDC was already operating Galavan, so they could just, we could just take over and operate their public transportation system also, but with a 
um, UGD model in mind, so representation from um, all, all areas of the community. So we knew that coming into the 2020 census, it was, Bozeman was likely going to be pushed over the 50,000 population threshold. Um, and so we knew that now was the time we needed to start working on getting an urban transportation district formed because that changes Bozeman's designation from a rural community to a small urban rents community, which does some things great for housing, um, but it, for transportation, um, public transportation, all it really does is change the funding structure. So instead of getting the rural funding, this pot of rural funding going to the state of Montana, who then allocates however they so choose to all the different rural communities, um, it goes directly, it comes directly from a small urban uh, area. So the states all get certain rural funding, certain tribal funding, certain small urban funding. Larger communities have um, large urbanized areas as well. Um, so we will be joining, Bozeman will be joining um, Missoula, Great Falls, and Billings as small urban areas. And they have different structures. Um, Great Falls and Missoula both have urban transportation districts, which have, were created in the 70s. Um, so they've had them for a long, long time. And the Billings has a um, city run system. Um, but they are, along with Butte, are also looking to potentially in the future create an urban transportation district as well. Um, so we had redesigned our routes a couple years ago and started implementing those. And we I always love to tell this because we went from the, changing the way we access Belgrade. We went from having one bus stop in Belgrade that was kind of hidden and tucked away to having eight bus stops in Belgrade. So we're, we're really proud of that. Uh, and we've hit the heart of Belgrade. It comes right into the downtown and hit the high school and. Um, and future plans are to um, increase frequency, so back and forth between Bozeman and Belgrade more frequently, and um, areas even in Belgrade that are kind of maybe on the outskirts of Belgrade could have some micro zone transits, um, which is smaller vehicles, more on demand, um, but that connect to the larger fixed route system. Um, and then again, in this this transit development plan that was released in early 2021. Um, it also said you should explore the community's interest in creating an urban transportation district to um, address the census findings that were likely to happen and then also to be able to plan for the future. Um, and so there was a public transportation steering committee formed um, with a lot of partner organizations, HRDC, um, Belgrade, Bozeman, Gallatin County, um, and so ultimately they also felt like the UTD was the best uh, option for our communities. And um, we'll talk about that in just a second of why, and then um, also had to create a boundary map. So um, that was an interesting process. Um, so one of the, I mean, these are probably the four best reasons. Um, it creates a single purpose entity. So instead of interesting or um, maybe giving the responsibility to uh, one government over another. An urban transportation district is more quasi-government, so it's not tied to city of Bozeman, city of Belgrade, or Gallatin County. Although we all want to work collaboratively and keep the focus on the regional um, process. So um, uh, our advisory board, so when Streamline was created, the Gallivan advisory board was, uh, grew, and change to make sure that we were representing <coughs> Bozeman, Gallatin County, um, writers and and all sorts of um, local partners, MSU and students at MSU. And so that's what uh, UTD would continue to do, is basically the um, advisory board was set up to be the predecessor to a governing UTD board. Right now, it's just an advisory board that then has, um, has to go through HMC governing board. Um, and then, there aren't, we'll look at the map in the next slide, but there aren't any geographical constraints. So if, we say, the city of Bozeman decided they wanted to operate Streamline, which they don't, um, but if they did, they could constrain it just to city limits or just a certain number of miles outside of the city limits. So, for example, Billings constrains their public transportation service to eight miles outside of city limits. So if that were done in Bozeman, we could probably access part of Belgrade, but not all of Belgrade. Um, 
And so uh, urban transportation district, the boundaries are, are where you have uh, <coughs> your primary service and planned service, but you can go outside of those boundaries. So uh, this, there could be a commuter service between um, Three Forks and Manhattan into Delray and Bozeman, um, if that's deemed appropriate at some point in the future. And then really, the, creating the urban transportation district just keeps things the way they are. Because the federal funding, we don't know if that means more money or less money, but we're hoping it's at least the same. It does also allow an opportunity for the district to apply for other um, funding for public transportation, such as, um, it's called state funding, and it's a, a small transit intensive cities. And so that can bring in some funding. Um, but the, forming the UTD just keeps it status quo. Um, we'll look at the boundary map next. Um, so as you'll see, Belgrade in the um, top corner of the kind of the triangle, although it's sort of a funny looking triangle. Um, if you can kind of see the shaded area, that's the city limits of Belgrade up there. But as you'll notice, it's there's more because we work with the city of Belgrade to find out where they're planning to annex in the future and where they're expecting to see development. Um, and I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but is the aquatic center, is that within the district? It's, it's the district off of Kendall Bridge, so it leads into that. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking, okay. Um, again, though, this district doesn't constrain the services just to that area. Have you um, uh, Livingston is just a commuter service, um, once in the morning, once in the evening, and it's just well, seasonalized. It could continue to be that. Um, and that that stemmed from um, a request from MSU, mm -hmm. and we will be also talking to them and say, to have them look at Three Forks in Manhattan and see if there may be some staff and students that would like that. The aquatic center is in there. Um, is it? It's, yeah, Ryan Glenn, because it comes oh, in. Yeah. Right. Oh, so yes, it's, that's right. Yeah, we, I knew we included Brian Glenn, yeah. but I wasn't quite sure. So, so uh, but even if it hadn't, we could still provide services. Yes. Um, and then there's that little thread out around the Royal Road in Amsterdam, that's River Rock. And then it goes down Thorpe Road, and then it kind of follows the river down to the south, where it uh, yeah. goes as far. And some of these little weird um, jets are because we had to follow a partial line. We couldn't just draw a straight line down the middle of the partial. Um, so that's kind of the interesting part. But um, the South does cover um, uh, Bozeman Hot Springs and um, Elk Grove, that development, and then follows to the east along, mostly along Blackwood <coughs> Drive, which um, the city of Bel Bozeman, you might notice, or along South 19th, there's a lot of, there's more development going that direction. But Further south from Blackwood, there becomes problems with um, water flow and sewer issues, and so that's not likely to develop in the near future. But that is something that we worked with the city of Bozeman on as well. And then um, in that, that south right corner is county, so four corners area, <coughs> we worked with county planning and development, community development to make sure that we're including the areas that we should be. Because we want to make sure that we're covering the service area that we have and what we're planned and what we think will be 20 years from now because if we don't and we draw it too small, then we have to do this entire process again. And we don't want to do that because <laughs> um, it's been a lot. But um, so we did, yeah, make sure that we're looking at areas that we're expecting future growth. And certain areas, even in like South Bozeman, we don't go south of MSU, but there's a lot of people that live in South Bozeman that would like to have the bus there. But it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Just like in Four Corners, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Because it's not really walkable or bikeable. Um, you're still kind of forced to get into a vehicle. So once you're in the vehicle, you're not going to get out. You're just going to keep going. So um, that's where the micro transit is kind of can provide service in a different way. Um, and and can it could be a fee structure in that, that scenario as well. Um, and again, like I said, we can go outside of there. Um, so just to talk a little bit about what the law requires to form an <coughs> urban transportation district, um, you have to collect 20% of registered voters' signatures on a petition um, to even get it certified to be a place on a ballot. So we have, were required to, so we had to draw those boundaries first, and then the county had to tell us um, how many 
signatures we needed. And we needed just under 13,000, and we had over 16,000 certified. So, and there was a lot more that signed that maybe didn't realize they had signed previously, <laughs> or, um, just got to or <laughs> I had a lot of, I gathered signatures as I was great at my mm -hmm. state, or at uh, Town Country, and a lot of people from Ann Am were like, can I sign it? I'm like, you can't, unfortunately. Like, you're, it doesn't count. Yeah. You're not within the New York City. Yeah. But we love your support and tell your friends. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, we got that done, got it turned into the county elections office. They certified it and um, told the county commission that it was certified, they expected to have signatures. So they then held a public hearing um, and they passed a resolution to place it on the ballot and to appoint the board, which is um, was really important that the city of Belgrade and the city of Bozeman also passed resolutions to appoint the board so that all three entities have one third of the appointed members so that we're guaranteed representation. Um, and appointed was important because otherwise they'd be elected and that's not the way. We want to make sure that we have people that are interested in growing public transportation and growing the community. And being part of, I, I mean, I always see public transportation as a way, talk about growth, being helping grow responsibly right. and maybe helping address affordability as well. Yeah. Um, because you may not need a second vehicle. And some people choose not to have a vehicle. I mean, granted, most of them live in Bozeman, but um, it's still, it's something that, it's an option. And it creates um, accessibility and inclusivity and um, really just makes, helps with health issues as well um, because people who ride transit might walk or bike to their um, bus stop or maybe further if they're, you know, they might go another two miles. Um, so they tend to live healthier lives. Um, so the district will be on the May 2nd ballot, which the important dates to remember, as he mentioned, um, 14th, next Friday is when the ballots will be mailed out, so probably the 5th or 17th is when we'll see it. Um, and we're recommending um, April 25th is the last day to mail it back in, just in case the Postal Service has some delays. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are drop boxes. Um, the City of Belgrade Finance Department, um, the County Elections Office, and the Mount Horton School. Um, and then MSU doesn't have a drop box, but they will have a couple of groups on campus that will be collecting ballots. So that the students are the lowest turnout, uh, but they also use the system the most <laughs> for us, so uh, we want to make sure that they're voting. Um, and then, yes, that by 8 o'clock May 2nd is when they have to turn into the ballot. Um, so this is the ballot language, and you'll notice the top is the question, how the ballot valley urban transportation district be created? Who knows what that is? Um, so hopefully people will continue reading. And um, it says, by voting yes, you support creation of the Gallatin Valley Urban Transportation District to supply public transportation services and facilities to district residents and other persons. The district will be governed and managed by a transportation board. The board shall have all powers necessary and proper to the establishment, operation, improvement, maintenance, and administration of the transportation district. And the last line is really important. There is no cost reform in this district. So this isn't associated with a tax. If in the future we want, we think the community wants to expand services um, and the federal government doesn't just give us a whole bunch more money, um, then we will, we would probably ask if the voters supported um, taxing themselves to create more uh, service. But this one does not, <coughs> this one keeps it status quo. Um, so essentially the district would be formed, there's a whole bunch of plans that have to be created before the federal transit dollars can go to the district. Um, so that there would be an operating agreement between the district and HRDC to continue operating the services. Um, and I recently met with the Bozeman, City of Bozeman staff and um, he had pointed out that a, a nonprofit operating a public transportation system is really unique. Yeah. It is. <laughs> um, but the benefits I see from it is the the culture that is at HRDC is a lot about serving the customer and um, providing good customer service and including everybody. And so that's one of the things that I think has been a real benefit um, that the customer is the priority and making sure that we're providing good, safe, efficient services. Increase it. Yes. 
Yeah, and that is one of the questions we get a lot is um, how, why don't you charge a fare? Um, and the reason is, there's a lot of reasons, and we do have that all listed on our webpage, but the main reasons are it's a it, size, the community of our size or um, our ridership was getting about eight to nine percent of revenue from uh, charging a fare. And so we don't, while we don't charge a fare when somebody gets on the bus, we do have community partners like City Belgrade, City of Bozeman, MSU of the Students, um, which is probably, uh, probably one of the larger uh, contributors, and um, some other local partners uh, pay or add revenue to the operating budget so that we don't charge a fare. And um, I was curious, so I looked at, there's a, so with the federal um, grant, we're required to match it. So we had to go out and get those, that money anyway. But we've been able to raise enough revenue that we not only meet that local match, but we also generate, we have more revenue than what a uh, fare would bring in. So um, that's, that's uh, and it's, it's some cities um, like Missoula went, from charging a fare to not charging a fare. So they did basically what we did in the beginning and go to their county and their cities and, and the um, university to, to help fund it. Um, and even larger cities like uh, Kansas City, I think, has gone to a zero fare. And there's other large cities that are trying to do that as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's a more equitable way to provide service. Oh, the three things to remember. Um, that the ballot language is Gallatin Valley Urban Transportation District, and that is for streamlining our grant. Um, because that, that, unless you're reading it really carefully, it might not connect the two, and so we just want to make sure that we're clearly stating that that's, that is the connection. Um, that there is no cost to form the district, and that streamlining our grant benefits everyone, even if you don't use it. So it can reduce congestion, free up parking, the more people we can get on the bus, the less vehicles and less emissions. And um, so we'll need to be thinking about those things a little bit more as our communities continue to grow. So that was all I had. Thanks. I just want to make sure I understood you correctly. Um, so because both of them are 50,000, we're no longer eligible. Yes, we will be for so a little bit. We need some kind of system. Yes, I mean that's required to get that federal money. Correct. Yes, HRDC is not an eligible recipient, so they it, they can be contracted to do the provide the service. But it will be this government board that's the yes. contract. Yes. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't pass, the city of Oakland could take it. City of Belgrade could take it. Um, the Gallatin County Commission to take it. Hmm. But likely they're going to disruption. But all yes. three of us all adopt resolutions in support <laughs> of doing it this way. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be in the urban no, transportation business. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be in the aquatics <laughs> business. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any more questions for any of our guests? Sunshine, is there a day that bus will go out to the airport? Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> that is in the future plan. So we did the transit development plan, and that the more frequency between Belgrade and Bozeman, the easier it will be for us to get into the airport. Yeah. Question. One thing that was really cool, we, you know, we were working on the downtown uh, plans for the city, and uh, we came out with a downtown uh, uh, plan, and uh, it's about the time Streamline changed their routes to come downtown, so it made us look like, yeah, we're, you know, getting the bus coming right downtown is making our downtown more viable, so it was a happy accident, but uh, I think a really good benefit. And the bus is infrastructure, just like water pipes and roads and things like that. It's, it's infrastructure, it's there. You may not need it now, but someday you might. Um, I've also encouraged anybody, if you ride the bus one or two times, you will probably have recouped your investment <laughs> that you personally make into it through paying taxes because it comes from federal funding and stuff like that. So um, it's kind of fun to do that sometimes and see where it goes. I mean, I, I, 
I don't have to take joyriding, but plan a, <laughs> plan a trip on the bus sometime and see how it works. It's pretty fascinating how, how it all works. All right. Thank you, attendees, for coming, and thank you for all of our guests for giving your information.